So I think the, the largest challenge that, that is, is uh, first of all, understanding what the regulation actually is and then figuring out what it means to your business. So the challenge is, what, what part of my business am I capturing? And I'm hearing from lots of uh, clients and on panels as well that they're finding new aspects of or new areas in their business they didn't realize were going to be captured. That's the first challenge to figure out what's supposed to be reported. After that is how do I get all this data together? Aggregating the data internally, perhaps if you've got a reporting hub, how do you get all the data into that one place is a huge challenge. And as you go through that process and you start communicating with your counterparts and finding out that what they're doing is, is perhaps different, their interpretation of transactions is different to yours. Uh, an example of doing the rounds at the moment is something like a rate change or a partial of a, a, of a transaction and the different booking uh, models that different companies have. So how do these counterparties get together? That's an enormous challenge for everyone. So you've got your aggregation of data and then what is that data and where is it coming from? I think the, the biggest hurdles that people are going through. There's a, a sort of helping hand that's happening with, uh, within industry bodies and with vendors as well. And it's sort of centralizing that conversation to make sure that people are, are more aligned. But everyone's recognizing that that's going to be a big challenge. And then after go live, the challenge is going to be how do we pair things as the first uh, order of priority. If you don't pair it, you can't match it, you can't reconcile it. And then the next priority after that would be let's, let's reconcile this stuff and make it clear. Time frame uh, is quite a difficult question because the, the final uh, regulation hasn't been adopted yet. So we keep on looking into uh, extending the roadmaps to a degree because you know, we're, waiting for, uh, we're waiting for the adoption process to happen. That, that means by adoption, what I mean by that is the European Commission start an adoption process. The, the, the European community uh, look at the regulation for about three months. At the end of that, you get, there's an uh, adoption process which has, then has to go through a translation and then it finally gets published into the official journal. So that's the go live date. From that you can work back, not only from the time scale, but also for the, the, the uh, standards that you have to apply to the data that you're sending in. So you work your way back from that, you have to do at least six months worth of testing with contingency in there as well, and then uh, you know, testing between, uh, between counterparties and then figuring out the transactions that you need to be sending in and, and the fields that need to be going uh, into that data as well and how to interpret it. So actually the time scale comes back, you've got a year from the publishing in the journal to go live, but actually you need to start doing work before this. So the time scale of really, uh, this is the time to be doing something very quite urgently in terms of the resources you're applying to it and the analysis you're doing to find out what part of my company is in scope. So it's a bit of an open-ended question. It starts now and you've got until, until the, you know, the, the year after the adoption process to, to get something done. So there's about a year, give or take. Uh, so the first thing is start now. This, uh, it's, it, like I said, I think it would be too late if you haven't started doing something already. So starting now is most important. Check out what your operating model is going to be, your target operating model is going to be and how you're going to do this. And the third point would be engage with the industry, engage with your counterparties, uh, in, uh, engage with your clients if you've got beneficial owners and engage with all the industry groups as well, uh, ISLAs, IGMA, AFME and, and uh, groups like that. I think that will put you in a much better position to understand what the challenges is going to be in the future. Uh, so IHS Market are naturally a data aggregator and so uh, when, it, when you apply uh, SFTR to that, to that model, it's natural that we're an aggregator for the market to help them with SFTR. So aggregation actually is quite a large, and we've been discussing it with, with clients and in lots of forums, aggregation actually covers a lot of different, different as, uh, aspects. So for instance, internally, the systems that they, get, they, they have, which are a variety of systems for trading for collateral, then they've got platforms that they're trading on, or they've got tri-party agents that they're using. So you have to aggregate from all these different places to get the final record of what needs to be reported under SFTR. Once that data has been aggregated, there's some other uh, functions that need to be uh, offered to clients. For instance, uh, the enrichment of referential data. You can't obviously change books and records, but you can help with the security reference data where they don't have it. So uh, issue LEI, for instance, and CFI code, and even perhaps credit ratings, which, which some of our clients don't naturally have. At the end of that, you can do validation rules, so business rules that you would apply to do to, as part of the aggregation service, but also validation rules as they're, as they're written in the, in the technical standards, so that it's then accepted into a, into a trade repository. 
trade repositories obviously do their own validation and then there's an ACT NAC process and so we take that back in and so we get a full end-to-end -end offering for the client from the aggregation of the data all the way to the trade repository and then the reconciliation of the data back to what the client originally sent us.